Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. This video is a complete breakdown of my latest animated short film, Goblin Scum. I'll be covering most of the stages in the process of making this animated short and share useful tips along the way. I hope you enjoy it and let's dive straight in. Here I have my move board open inside QRF and this is the necessary stage in production since it predetermines the art direction and designs of my character. As you can see on the top enlarged image, you can check out that um, different types of characters riding boards. Here are other examples of an atom for the goblin character and for the costume and the weapons, armor different uh, aspects or that can contribute to the design of the goblin and here are other references uh, for the boar uh, you as you can see there are different anatomical uh, close-up uh, and uh, other things like specific things like the snouts the teeth the fur and with that information i then move on to designing the characters and modeling them So, starting with blockouts. I start to create my characters in firstly out of blockouts. Um, these are just basic shapes that I use to create a basic now uh, of the musculature, the silhouette, the proportions, and things like that out of different meshes. As you can see in this board character, yeah, it's made up of uh, different components as separate meshes. And uh, that this is a very crucial step in making your characters make sense before diving into detail. And you can see the same thing here applied for the goblin character. It's made up of different meshes. You can see the eyelashes, the eye uh, leaders, uh, the fingers, the palm of the hands, as well as the head and the ears. These are just different components that we uh, create as blockouts. And because yeah, this, uh, as a separate layer, the basic proportions of the uh, armor and the clothing are being blocked out. Uh, I'll pretty much uh, dive into more detail about this topic in another video. So, moving on to sculpts. As you can see, this is a very straightforward uh, jump from the blockout to the sculpted version of the board. Uh, as you can see, blocking this out as much detail, with as much detail as possible, made the detailing and the sculpting stage easier for the boar and for the goblin character. As you can see, it's just uh, a matter of adding a more defined musculature, more defined wrinkles and more of an appealing transition between shapes. Um, so this is pretty much how I approach the uh, concept of sculpting and creating a character uh, with as much detail as possible. And here you can see the sculpts in their full glory. <laughs> so moving on to retopology, I pretty much use this straight up hard measure add-on. Uh, I'm not gonna brag about remodeling things by myself, things like that. I just used quad measure to get as fast as possible results. Uh, same for the board character. The only difference here is uh, that I cleaned up the eyes for a proper topology for blinking later. Um, that's pretty much it for the retopology stage. So starting with the baking and texturing of the goblin, as you can see, I've used the substance painter. It's my go-to program for baking and texturing stuff. So. I just started with a base color uh, wing and I started adding layers upon layers on the base color of the model and as you can see it instantly makes the skin, the skin color more interesting. Um, I then proceeded to add some subtle bumps on the skin as well as fleshy pink parts on the nose, on the eyes, and on the ears and the, on the lips. Uh, I then proceeded to add some 
hard to need materials on top of it. Uh, it's pretty much just mountain rate hero, I think, for the mids. Uh, as you can see, this is a very simple approach of texturing the skin of the character. I then, I then moved on to adding textures to the clothing. Uh, this is a very straightforward approach of uh, deciding which parts are going to be fabric, which parts are going to be metallic, which parts are going to be leather and stuff. Uh, and then I just proceed to add smart materials after smart materials to fill, on, fill in those gaps. Uh, but that's pretty much it for me. Uh, I only add a certain amount of curvature, ambient occlusion, baked lighting, some sort of things like that, just to spice up the basic textures of the smart material it provides and to give it a little more personality. Um, besides that, there's nothing really special about how I approach the texturing of the garments and the closing of the goblin. Oh, as you can see, I added in a little bit of uh, personality by um, stitch patch uh, all the trousers. I then moved on to adding textures to the helmets and the weapons. They were unwrapped in a different UV map and I gave them separate material to give them more quality when once they're unwrapped and once they're fixed, to give them more resolution. And here's the same approach, uh, repeated, just adding whatever type of smart materials fits the different parts of the armor. Moving on to the board, um, this is a very straightforward and very, very, very simple approach of texturing that I use for the board. It's just a base material of dark brown with some AO and some curvature. The only special thing that I did was add some material variation for the nose, for the ears, and I tried to paint some sort of fur on the skin of the character to make it look like a fake fur, but it didn't work out, so I just dumped it. Um, besides that, I added the carriage and uh, all the other equipment that the board will be carrying as a separate unwrap and as a separate material here in substance. And as you can see, it was very, very easy. And there's nothing too special about this texture process. So for rigging the characters, I just simply use the uh, Rigify Preset Rigs. Um, they're a lifesaver. As you can see, I had literally no effort, no hard work. I mean, pretty much setting up a base rig and aligning the bones. And for the animation, I just used four stages for animating my characters. I'm not an expert animator, but I'll try to explain um, what these four stages are, basically, uh, in my own terms. Um, so I start with blocking. I just add the basic key poses, as you can see. And uh, I just focus on the timing, framing, and the posing of the characters. No interpolation, no fancy stuff for the characters. And here's the result of the blocking. And then I just add in-betweens. Uh, that includes breakdown poses, filling in the blanks uh, with other poses. Still no interpolation. And this is how it looks as uh, in-between stage. And then I then move on to a splining stage. This is just changing the interpolation from you know, from constant to Bezier. Um, and then I just add polish because uh, the explaining stage isn't that appealing and I just add polish to very tiny details of uh, animation for the face and the accessories. And this is how it results. Now, So, for the environment assets, I pretty much went to Quixel mega scans. Uh, this is the best site that I found that has the most amazing uh, environmental assets and not really good at creating environmental assets. So I heavily rely on them for my environments. Uh, as you can see, I basically blocked out the whole scene with the simple objects like tubes and the plane, just to visualize how the composition will look and how it will uh, affect my shots. 
and once I'm happy with my composition, I just go to straight into importing the necessary assets that fit my vision or that fit the look that I'm aiming for. In this case, I'm using sandstone rock collection from Quixel. I think that's what I used since they look very deserty and uh, very they fit uh, the starting shot of my animation very well in my opinion. So I then moved on to putting them in a separate collection and using them as uh, another collection for the assembly stage. Here it gets a lot easier since I am following the cube and the plane layout of my environment and I just add this final um, full quality assets to fit the composition and the arrangement and the layout of the, the basic 3D scene that I planned out initially. And this is how it looks. <laughs> I know it's not appealing from off the camera, but uh, at the end of the day, what matters is, you know, what the camera sees. And uh, from here, it looks like a very vast environment. Um, same thing here. Uh, the same thing is applied for this uh, another shot that I've been working on. Uh, as you can see, this it's comprised of basic cube shapes uh, that I uh, duplicated and uh, they have literally no detail and uh, once I'm happy with the composition and the arrangement of those things I then proceed to create um, to collect the different assets uh, that fit the the shots and in this case it was uh, a collection of mossy so you know some sort of uh, very mossy forest like rocks and I tweaked the material so that the moss would be adapted whether whatever angle you decide to tilt and rotate the mega scan mesh and this is a very quick sculpt of a character that i of a statue that i created and this is the very basic collection of uh, assets i then proceed to lay out and uh, arrange them in a similar manner that like the first shot to achieve uh, the cinematic look and the cinematic layout that I was planning in my mind. So this is the final result of the environment of ads. So for the lighting and rendering of the entire scene, um, I pretty much had attempted to light these scenes on a step-by-step -step basis. I'm going to use this example, uh, this first shot as an example of how I approached lighting the scene and lighting the characters uh, within the scene. So I created a separate collection for lighting the environment uh, that collects all the lights. Uh, I then moved on to um, approaching the lighting in two different stages that is the environment lighting and the uh, characters lighting. Um, here's a, another uh, tip that uh, I used very frequently. I used cards with uh, basic gradient textures to simulate fogginess and a very distant mist that, give it, that gives it more uh, depth. I then proceeded to add a sky uh, image as a background it's uh, a lot more useful than using the raw HDR, right? For lighting your, as a background for your sky. And then I added a point light uh, right directly on the surface of the uh, image plane. That gives it, a, once I give it a lot of power, it gives it a type of sunrise, sunset type of glare. Um, and then I proceeded to light the, um, character with uh, different lights oriented to the rig so that the, when the character moves the lights follow it as well uh, leaving us with a very consistent form of lighting so that's how I approach my lighting there's nothing too special about this process but I hope it gives you some amount of insight thanks for watching this breakdown video I hope you enjoyed the process watching this process as much as I did explaining it uh, don't forget to like Share and subscribe for more content. Uh, I hope to improve my video making abilities uh, from now on. Uh, but I hope you enjoyed 
what was presented here. Uh, and if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Until next time, keep creating.